Hi, my name is Linda Katz. I'm the policy director and co-founder of the Economic Progress Institute. Our country and our state are in the midst of implementing health care reform, which is designed to provide health coverage for the majority of people, improve health care, and control costs for businesses and individuals. Rhode Island is a national leader in the establishment of a state health insurance exchange, providing new options for small businesses and providing access to health insurance for many Rhode Islanders. What role do you see for Health Source RI, our state health insurance exchange, in health care reform, and how do you propose to fund it after federal funds are no longer available? Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Um, Ensuring access to high quality, affordable health care is one of the most important things that we can do. The, the day that I kicked off my campaign in Pawtucket at, at the Hope Artis Village, I toured some of the small businesses there and I met a woman and she said to me that she was a huge fan of the Affordable Care Act. And I talked to her a little bit and she explained to me that she was a cancer survivor, pre-existing condition, and she told me that the health exchange and the Affordable Care Act was literally going to save her life because she could now buy insurance at a level she could afford despite her pre-existing condition. Again, the power of good government to change people's lives. Uh, I agree Rhode Island has done a, an excellent job of getting Health Source up and running, and I think already uh, you know, 84,000 sign-ups have happened since it opened, so that is terrific. Uh, the question of how to pay for it is the question. You know, that is clearly the question. Uh, and here's what I will say. We have to find a way to pay for it. <laughs> uh, now, the plan that we have now, what the health exchange must do, it must provide access. It must allow people to go online and buy insurance. It now does other things and is designed to do other things, provide transparency around pricing and compare quality. All of those things are important to do. We have to figure out whether all of that has to happen on the exchange, or maybe that could be happening you know, in other, um, other programs that we have. The bottom line is, as I've said before, um, it's in everyone's interest to have our children healthy at school, to have people healthy to show up for work, to have affordable health care so our small businesses aren't put out of business by the rising cost of health care, and we will work together to find a way to continue the success of our health exchange. Angel Tibetan. Thank you, Linda, and thank you for your work with the uh, Economic Progress Institute. Um, I think that uh, I mentioned earlier visiting Allenberry Health Center on Prairie Avenue. It's now moved over um, to uh, on the corner of Prairie and, uh, and Potters, um, and having that experience. I remember my mom uh, talking to us about having a job with beneficios. Beneficios is benefits. She got benefits, and the biggest benefit she got is she had health insurance, and when we were able to see a, um, a, uh, our own provider, and that made a big difference in our life. Um, this is an important issue, and I want to give a lot of credit to uh, Christine Ferguson, who has led this effort in Health Source Rhode Island. Um, this is an important issue for all of us because we all pay either on the front end or we'll pay on the back end um, if we don't invest in the on the front end. Today we have Rhode Island Kids Count, and we heard the speaker speak about what we had done with Right Care and how we had been able to move so many of our kids to have coverage. How do you pay for this? You make it a priority when you put together a budget, the budget ref reflects your priorities. When I put together a budget as mayor, that's what I have to do, and that's the same thing that we have to do as governor. And that is what I will do as governor. This will be at the very beginning of the budget process. Make sure that the funds are there to pay for it, because it's too important not to. Both of the other candidates have um, asked to respond and uh, first come, first serve. Todd? I was, uh, a few minutes back, I wanted to comment and say that uh, I once had a worker who said, I, I don't care what you pay me today, I just don't want to go to work hungry. And um, this was just a, a story from Block Island days of mine, but um, you know, this is about getting a, getting a meal in school. Um, having access to starting the day not being hungry 
making sure that that's where the students have their, their start, is not to be, uh, you know, that island that doesn't have that support system. And, and I think that's one of the important things we can do. As far as how do we pay for health care, I say, why don't we start by not paying for 38 studios? The next $12 million payment would be a down payment uh, towards next year we're going to have to start picking this up. Is it 16 months out? But uh, that would be a great start if we did not pay for 38 studios. That would be our down payment. And then we got just a short $12 million gap to, to go from there. $25 million for health care for all around is a great deal, and I support that. I, I just want to quickly point out something which I, I just don't think we say enough because this was a long battle and I think we know that the battle over health care is not over. But how proud I think we can be and should be of our president, President Obama, in leading the charge on health care and how proud we should be of our state for getting this done. We have led the country here. And these investments are things that we have to protect, and I am absolutely committed as governor to protecting them, to funding it, and to making sure that health care is affordable for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your responses.